Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to give a talk on our work, linear algebra on tensor core. To be more specific, we'll use tensor core based QR factorization as an example to address how to use utilize tensor core to accelerate matrix factorizations. At first, let me give a brief introduction on half precision and. Tensor core to show why we'd like to perform linear algebra algorithms on tensor core. As the word half precision indicates, this precision only has half number of bits compared to single precision. Using half precision leads to fast computation and data movement at cost of loss of accuracy. There are two standards of half precision, AP16 and BFLOW16, which is shown in the figure. BFLOW16 has the same number of bits of exponents with FB32, but the number of bits of mantissa is only 7. It means BFLOW16 has a wider range but larger unit, unit run of error when compared with FB16. However, NVIDIA's GPUs only support FB16 except its last Ampere architecture, which was introduced in May this year. Besides, Ampere architecture even supports FP32 and FP64. For a background on half precision, I'd love to introduce a special unit on NVIDIA's Volta tuning and Ampere architecture, which is called Tensor Core. Tensor Core only supports fused general matrix multiplications. Actually, like these fixtures, Tensor Core performs 4x4 matrix multiplications at one time. It can take FP16 matrices as inputs and output FB16 or FT32 results. Besides, accuracy is actually much better than the naive half-precision gem. Moreover, matrix multiplication on tensor core are much faster than HGM. See the table. TCGM is around 16.8 times 8.2 times and 4.2 times faster than DGM, SGM, and HGM respectively. So, how to use tensor core? The easiest way to use related API is from Kublas library, and it has many variations. A more flexible and also high efficient way to program tensor core is through the Kublas template library from NVIDIA. Or we can directly call the WMA intrinsic C++ functions or PTX MMA instructions. There are some differences between them. Kubla's stream function is a black box and typically is a fattest. Catalyst is similar but is open source and is very flexible with different algorithms, shapes, precisions, and operations. WMA and MAPTX is RapidLab API and hard to use. In this paper, we use Kubla's library. So, how is Tensor Core helpful for the applications? Because we can only perform gems on Tensor Core. Blocking this linear algebra may help. Also, recursive algorithms usually lead to big gems. In numerical optimization, use second order information like Hayden may be helpful. There are also some overkill examples. Use gems for matrix vector multiplication, dot product, and even for reduction and scan. Although most of the operations are wasted, speed may still be faster at the end. The NVIDIA's new Ampere architecture emphasizes the strength of Tensor Core. See this table. The performance is even much better. Now, for TCGM, it can reach to 312 TFLOPs, and the rest of the system does not have such improvement. This means that the speed gap between Tensor Core and the rest of the system is even larger. That we should figure out a way to use Tensor Core as much as possible on the Ampere architecture. I'd also like to give more details about Tensor Core. The first topic is why is Tensor Core so fast and how it works. The Tensor Cores are dedicated units on GPU and Volta to Tensor Cores per subcore, four subcores per streaming multiprocessor. There are 640 Tensor Cores in total on 105. We have collaborators in operating the Tensor Core matrix multiply accumulate operations. The matrix tile is distributed in the registers of the participating threads. Each thread gets a fragment in its registers. 
A tensor core completes 4x4x4 four by four by four matrix multiplication in one, in one cycle. Data reuse and access pattern are critical. The CUDA compiler, NVCC compiles the code to host code and device code. The device code is compiled to PDX instructions at first, then it is compiled to the relevant machine code SASS. Here is a simple example of PDX instructions. The second topic is related with numerical issues. As we mentioned before, the mixed precision mode of tensor core multiplies in FT16 and accumulates in FT32. Therefore, compared to a single procedure, tensor core is less precise, but not quite as bad as pure FP16 arithmetic, because the accumulation is done in single procedure. The running error of TCGM includes two parts. The first one is initial truncation of FP32 to FP16 of the import matrices. The second one is a running error from FP16 accumulator for small size n around 10,000. The initial truncation error bound dominates. For larger size, the accumulation error bound becomes prominent. Let's see some recent applications on Tensor Core. Tensor Core is designed to accelerate deep neural networks at the very beginning. The inside gems can be accelerated by March in deep neural networks and thereby the overall computation time will be reduced. Later, researchers investigated how to utilize tensor core other than neural networks. Using tensor core to do reduction and scan is an example. Because the talk is related with linear algebra, I'd like to give more details about an application of how to use tensor core on LU factorization. Let's look at the figure. This figure shows how LU factorization works. We first perform the panel factorization. And then we do a triangular solve to get the northeast part. Finally, we perform the gem to update the rest of the matrix, which is called trailing matrix update. In this single step, we can consider using tensor core in trailing matrix update. And this is what Magma, a linear algebra library working on hybrid system does. The experimental results also show that tensor core can accelerate LU factorization in magma. So, there's a question. Can tensor core be used on other matrix factorizations? Before answering this question, let's select QR factorization as an example to see if tensor core helps. QR factorization is the decomposition of the matrix A into a product by an orthogonal matrix Q and an up triangular matrix R. The conventional QR factorization algorithm is using householder transformations. The entire block householder QR factorization is shown in the figure, similar with block LU factorization. The block householder QR factorization also consists of panel factorization and training and matrix update. We first factorize the tall and skinny panel when, and then we perform gems to update the training matrix. So, can we simply replace gems with these gems in block householder QR factorization, just like what Magma does? Unfortunately, based on our experiments and analysis, I'm afraid the answer is no. There are two main reasons. The first one is the matrix multiplication is not completely on the critical path. The second reason is the tiled algorithm is not exposing enough data locality for significant acceleration. I'm going to discuss the reasons in detail. In Magma LU factorization, the matrix update is performed on GPU while the panel factorization is on CPU. Typically, the execution time of a matrix update is longer than CPU panel factorization. See this figure. If the train matrix update is performed on tensor core, it's obvious that the overall execution time can be reduced. However, when it comes to QR factorization in Magma, things become different. In the second figure, we can observe that in the trading matrix update in block householder QR can be perfectly overlapped by the panel factorization. Therefore, even if we are using tensor core to do gems, the overall computation time will be still the same because the speed is bounded by panel factorization. This experimental results illustrates the first reason. 
A matrix multiplication is not completely on the critical path. In terms of second reason, we know that time scaling matrix multiplications cannot expose enough data locality. Actually, to run at full speed of tensor core, the number of columns must last than 2000 when the number of rows is large enough. This prevents the conventional block household cure benefit much from tensor core. Let's do a rough estimation. Assume the time cost of the panel and matrix per date is close. Then the total execution time of QR can be computed by this formula. Then we replace gem with TCGM and finally we get this figure. We can find that using TCGM only increase the speed a little bit, about 30%. In fact, the panel factorization usually takes longer than the matrix per date which means the improvement will be even smaller. People may ask why we don't increase the block size to ensure the gem to run at full speed. The reason is that if we have a larger block size, the panel will be slower, although the update is faster. The overall computing time will increase. See the last three bars in the figure. Hence, we need a new algorithm if we want to use tensor core. The goal of the new algorithm is giving more and bigger gems. Recursive formulation may help. It can give us more and bigger gems, but the total number of flops is larger than the conventional block algorithms. For QR, the flop is around 1.5 times larger than householder QR. So, we need to make a choice. More opportunities of using tensor core or less arithmetic operations. Is it worthwhile to use recursive formulation of QR? Before answering the question, let's take a look at the algorithm. At first, we divide the matrix into two blocks. Then we factorize the first block. As soon as we have Q1 and R11 of the first block, we can obtain the northeast part of R. After that, we update the second block and factorize the update matrix to get Q2 and R22. At the final stage, we combine Q1, Q2, R11, R12, and R22 to get the final Q and R. We follow this process recursively until the number of columns is less than or equal to the block size. Now, let's compute the estimated performance of RGS QRF. Similarly, we assume that the panel takes the same time as gems. The overall computing time can be computed by this formula. And the figure shows the estimated performance. In this figure, we have the finding RGS QRF is more friendly to tensor core. Actually, using tensor core can give at least 50% acceleration on the hour assumption. So now, we have a good start. RGS QRF is able to benefit from tensor core. Can we have further acceleration? He notes that in Magma, panel takes a lot of time. Can we accelerate this process? The weapon is using communication avoiding QR factorization. This method is widely used when the matrix is very tiny skinny. The process is shown in the figure. We divide the matrix into several blocks. For example, in this figure, we have four blocks. The first step is factorizing this block separately. Then stack the separate R and factorize the star cake. Make sure to get an, another Q and R. Finally, let left Qs time the right Qs. Now we have the new orthogonal matrix and an up triangular matrix. Theoretically, CQR can be executed on GPU very efficiently because of more pyramid, that locality and less synchronization, but the number of flops is slightly Larger. Another thing should be considered is the implementation of the panel because panel is difficult and, and important. The limited parallelism prevents the panel to be very fast, although the flaws are not as many as gems. Because the tensor core is extremely fast, most of the time might, I, might actually be spent in the panel. However, Christopher QR is too slow for panel. We need our own fast panel to unveil the power of tensor core. We have two native panel CUDA kernel. The first one is working like this. We have several 256 by 32 submatrices on V100 GPU. The submatrices can fit into shared memory. These blocks are independently factorized in using MGS algorithm. The first reduction is the red block level, and there are multiple reductions for each thread. Reduction algorithm is from CUB library, and we aggregate fold reduction into one to reduce the number of the reduction operations. In every single iteration, 
Reductions through shadow memory and up to nine reductions are on a critical path. Other operations are perfectly in parallel. In general, we launch 256 threads each thread handles with one row. The second panel is a new one. Reduction is rep level, which means we don't need to go to the shadow memory. Also, reps perform all reduction independently. In each iteration, two rep level reductions are on the critical path, and the scanning columns are done in parallel. In general, each rep is in charge of one column. As a result, the new panel is roughly two times faster than the first panel and brings around 25% performance contribution to the entire computation. Our paper is based on the first one. Now let's move to the performance part. The number of arithmetic operations is 2mn square, which is larger than block half to the QR factorization. Note that with explicit Q, the number of arithmetic operations of a household QR will be doubled. Because we have a CAQR panel and RGSQRF, we'd like to show the effect of using CAQR and tensor core. The figure shows the effect of using CAQR and we are able to see that without CAQR, the performance is not that good. In terms of the tensor core, we have two different judgments, including enabling tensor core in CAQR. There are some gems inside the CAQR and enabling tensor core in training matrix update. So, in this figure, we can see three bars. Compare the first bar and the second bar, we didn't find any difference. Which means using tensor core in CAQR is unnecessary. Consider the loss of accuracy. We decide to disable tensor core in the end. Compare the second bar and the th third bar. We can con conclude that tensor core also plays a very important role in RGSQRF because without tensor core, the RGSQRF is even slower than crossover SGQRF routine when the metric is square. Generally speaking, CAQR panel contributes more when metric is skinny, while TCGM contributes more when metric is square. However, as I mentioned in the introduction, tensor core is much faster at the cost of losing accuracy. So, how about the accuracy of RGSQRF? Let's talk about backward accuracy at first. Theoretically, the backward accuracy is bounded by the machine epsilon. Also, we can convert this in the figure. When it comes to orthogonality, things become different. Theoretically, the orthogonality is highly related with the condition number, actually. It's greater than c times condition number and less than c times condition number square. The red line is in this figure shows that the orthogonality is close to c times condition number. Fortunately, the loss of orthogonality can be brought back by reorthogonalization. Let it perform another QR factorization on Q. In this equation, the Q1 becomes a new Q. We will talk about the RGS QRF and we will see the great performance and accuracy results. The problem is that how we can use RGS QRF in other problems. Because of the loss of accuracy problem, in some cases, the results of RGS QRF cannot be directly used. Here we select two applications, including solving linear x square problems and optimal low rank optimization. For linear Likert square problems, we are aiming to find the minimal solution of an overdetermined system. We can directly find the solution of LLS problems with the problem with the results from SGQRF or DGQRF, but the result of RGSQRF is not accurate. So we use the low precision factorization results as preconditional and then use it in the iterative method. For low rank approximation, also called QRSVD, QR factorize the target matrix at first and then perform SVD on R, the difficulty of the derived applications. As I mentioned before, it's handling with the loss of accuracy and the orthogonality generated by tensor core. This figure shows the occurrence of comparison when solving linear least square problems using different precision and algorithms. Also, the condition number of the original matrix is changing. The RGSQRF plus CGLS can converge to some error rate as double precision direct solver in five iterations in terms of simple cases. In contrary, RGSQRF direct solver shows the worst accuracy. We may also care about the overall performance of solving linear least square problems. If CGLS takes too much to converge, then RGSQRF will be useless in solving linear least square problems. Fortunately, Experimental results show that even with some really ill-conditioned metrics, 
CGLL is still done and take too much time. Here are some examples. Uniform distribution. SVD geometric distribution with condition number 1000 and SVD arithmetic distribution with condition number 1 million. From these different types of input matrix results, we are able to conclude that in most of cases, RGLSQF plus CGLS can solve linear least square problems with higher speed and competitive accuracy. QRSVD is not a story. We don't need any refinement to rescue the accuracy loose. See this table. RGSQRF SVD is around six times faster than SGQRF SVD, and meanwhile, we didn't see any difference between the results, even if the rank is as large as 512. This is because the error mainly comes from truncation instead of intensive core. There are still some limitations regarding RGSQRF. For example, RGSQRF cannot factorize singular matrices. Besides, the factorization quality of some special matrices such as SVD geometric distribution is bad when the condition number is as large as 10,000. We devise another similar algorithm which is called recursive householder QR factorization that can solve these problems. Look at this equation and this figure. The difference between our HOU QR and the RGS QRF is we are using WY representation to maintain the orthogonality. There is an extra process. Remember, in CAQR, the output is an explicit Q rather than WY representation. Therefore, we need to reconstruct the WY representation from the explicit Q. WQR speed is lower than RGS QRF because of more arithmetic operations and extra process. But when the metric is square, they perform at the same level. It's because we have a better kernel implementation in RHOUQR, actually. It's the same strategy we introduced in the second kernel. For accuracy, both of the backward error and orthogonality of RHOUQR is bounded by the machine epsilon. We have introduced our work, tensor core based recursive gram smith QR factorization and its applications. We could have some conclusions. First, Tensor units seem to be trending because of its excellent performance on gems. Secondly, RGS QRF can provide a significant speed up compared with SG QRF. Thirdly, occurrence loss can be refined by iterative methods. The last one is that in some cases, refinement is unnecessary because of other errors, it's usually much bigger. But they are not entire conclusions. Like the title indicates, we are aiming to devise more linear algebra algorithms on tensor core. So the following conclusions are related with how to program on tensor core. On the one hand, some conventional algorithms are not friendly to tensor core, so we may need to design some new algorithms. On the other hand, some algorithms that would normally not be considered can make more sense when the new hardware can execute them very efficiently like the recursive QR factorization. People don't consider arguing because it's slower than the block household QR. So, I would suggest that if you are going to design some new algorithms that can work on tensor core, it must have two distinctions. The first one is that algorithms must be rich in gems, otherwise tensor core cannot help. The second one is that we must have some refinements to re rescue the accuracy loose or we use the results from tensor core based algorithms to solve some accuracy insensitive problems, such as deep neural, ne such as deep neural networks and low rank approximation. And this is why we give two applications linearly square and QRSVD. There are still some work to be done in the future. We would like to medicate our work to other platforms like Google TPU, NVIDIA A100. And even future CPUs. Also, we are still working on a research project named Linear Algebra on Tensor Core. Up to now, we have finished the QR factorization, and the new recursive holder QR is in progress. Also, in the future, we are going to implement the Tensor Core based LU factorization, some BRA3 operations, Trotsky factorization, singular value decomposition, eigenvalue decomposition, and even other special metrics operations like low rank of debt. Thanks all, any questions?